this is going to be part one of the configuration of VFIO or GPU pass through in Linux. And this is a very complex setup. And I'm going to go over why it's so complex, why you can't just follow a guide and get it done because there's so many moving factors. But once you understand the steps I'm about to lay out, you should be able to get there. So stay tuned. So after each one of these steps, I'm going to show you verification commands that are pretty much universal between all distributions in Linux. You need to look at each one of these steps, tackle that step, get the verification, and then move to the next step. Many people try to blindly follow VFIO or GPU pass-through guides, and they fail every single time, and there's a good reason for that. First off, you need to match your CPU architecture, whether it's AMD or Intel. And that's the very first part that I'm going over is IOMMU. So I'll show you how to enable that. Then the second step will be to actually start blacklisting the card in your kernel. That gives it the ability to pass that device through. This is by far the hardest step of GPU pass-through or VFIO pass-through just because it has so many aspects that can go wrong. And I wanna just touch on those real fast. First off, is it an AMD card or an NVIDIA card? Now, I'm a big AMD guy, and I really like their lineups, both in CPUs and GPUs, after the Ryzen chips came out. So, with that said, uh, also, the GPUs have a distinct advantage over NVIDIA in this setup, because NVIDIA, has purposefully gone out of its way to try to make sure PCI pass-through doesn't happen on their residential line graphics cards. So that means if you have a 1060, a 1080, the 280s, all these residential cards that you go out to Best Buy and purchase don't work out of the gate. You have to do a lot of configurations or more configurations than an AMD card. I just want to lay that out and I am doing this from a perspective of an AMD card in this video today. So I just want to throw that out there. I will leave a link to where you can go to to look at the NVIDIA card setup but just know you do have extra steps. The other thing with VFIO pass-through is it fundamentally works different between distributions. Arch uses MK init and Debian based systems uses init RAM FS. So, uh, you know, init RAM, NK init, there's not too much differences as far as the syntax and how you do it, but you're editing different files and you're compiling it completely different. How they function is pretty much the same from my understanding. Just know if you're an Arch user, this is mainly meant for Debian. Whenever you see init RAM and you're an Arch user, you need to start thinking, hey, I need the MK init portion of this to get it working. And I highly recommend the Arch wiki because it goes over PCI pass through and shows the MK init syntax for Arch. So uh, with that said, those are the two differences in this step or step two of getting the actual card using the VFIO kernel so it can pass through to the virtual machine. So very, very important. And then the last step I'll go over is basically whitelisting the ability to do certain things in both AppArmor um, and SE Linux. So I'm not going over the SE Linux portion today because if I did this video, if I try to wrap everything up, it'd probably be an hour long just for part one. And this is gonna be a three part series. With that said, I'm going over AppArmor and that's all Debian based. If you are using Fedora, CentOS, Red Hat, you know, any of those operating systems, you know you are using SE Linux, not AppArmor. Uh, SE Linux is basically, or AppArmor is really SE Linux just in a Debian environment, but I won't go very much there. I've done a video on that. I'll go ahead and link it up top. But those are the three steps I'm doing in this configuration video. After these steps, we can start in on actually building the VM and making that hot and sexy. But uh, I wanted to limit these videos down as much as I could and then put timestamps in the description so you can easily flip between the steps, try and figure out each step because each one of these steps is vital. And if you miss or on the con confirmation portion of the step, you don't see what I see on my screen, then you need to go to Wiki, you need to you know, start Googling what to do to get that step working.
Okay, let's start out by making our modifications to Grub. This needs to be done just because IOMMU needs to be set as a Linux kernel default. This is pretty much the same no matter what distribution you're on. So let's go ahead and make that change. And I've already made this change, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you the file. Now, obviously you'd need to run this as super user. Again, I don't wanna change it just because of this. So this is what this Grub file looks like come down to this line right here, grub command line Linux default, you'll probably just see quiet here. Go ahead and add IOMMU equals one. And if you're using an AMD card, or I'm sorry, an AMD CPU, you will need to put AMD underscore IOMMU. Now, if it's Intel, instead of AMD, you need to put Intel, um, but that's it. So from here, you would just write out and then exit the file. And then you would simply just do a sudo update dash grub. Hit enter, this would rebuild your grub, and then you'd have this feature enabled and ready to go. Now, to verify this after the reboot, you will need to do uh, what's called a D message and grep uh, the IOMMU options. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do D message and grep IOMMU. So you should see that the counters are supported and then you know, hey, I can go ahead and proceed. This is step one. Once this is done, you verified it, we can go on to the next one. Now we need to find the actual device IDs of your graphics card that we're going to pass through. To do this, we're going to do an LS PCI dash NN. The dash NN gives us those numbers that we need. Without the dash NN, we wouldn't be able to see the device IDs we need. And then we're going to go ahead and pipe, and then we're going to do a grep uh, insensitive and VGA and audio. So the things we want to pass through, I only want to pass through my 570 because I like my Vega 64 being on my Linux box because that's where most of my gaming happens. There's only going to be a select number of games I want to play through PCI pass through. If you don't fit that bid build and you're more comfortable doing everything in Windows, obviously you want to pass through the more powerful card. So you'd pick out the two uh, versions of the card. First you need the VGA and then you need the audio. It's very important you pick both because you got to remember HDMI does audio and it does video. So uh, out of these devices, I can easily see that my 570 audio, which is right here, audio device, and then the VGA controller. So these are kind of like the group and right here is the device ids so the things you absolutely need out of this is this device id and this device id these are the two most important device ids so you'd go ahead and copy those down and we're going to need them in the next step so from here we need to start editing now this step is going to definitely vary from distribution to distribution because some distributions use init ram fs other ones use uh mk init fs and the mk init i know arch uses that version and on the arch wikipedia it'll kind of show you which files to modify it's going to be along these same steps just know whenever you see init ram fs if you're an arch user that is going to be different and it will not be applicable to you so with that let's go ahead and check out what we need. So first file we would want to edit is the init ram fs tools modules. And this file, what you'll see when you first get into it is all the comments and above are gonna be the only thing in this file. Everything from soft dep on down is me. So I'm putting this in the description of this video so you can copy paste this. Just remember, to change your IDs to what we just looked up. This right here, which this is the graphics card, comma, and this is the audio card on the graphics card. So you do that and then you do it again down here following this format. Everything else is the same. So when that done, we need to mirror this on the other modules, which is the modules in the ETC directory. So let's nano that next. And this one is quite a bit more simpler. Uh, just notice that the VFIO, um, again, just add your device IDs as you did in step one. Um, just know that it's not exactly the same. This is the format.
But when you open this file for a first time, again, it'll be empty, except for the comments above. And then the next files we're gonna actually create. Um, and I'm gonna show you this directory. It's the mod probe directory. So let's go into it, nano etc mod probe dot d do amd gpu dot conf and you're just putting this one command so this right here is universal um now this is for my amd gpu nvidia will be different they'll use different drivers so uh please note that um now we've done that we also now need to do it or the actual graphics card. Now what this is doing is changing the kernel driver this card is using. I don't want it using AMD GPU, I want it using VFIO so I can pass it through. We'll go back into our mod probe directory and this one is a brand new file. You will definitely not have either the AMD GPU file or the VFIO file. And I'd add this line right into this file. So copy paste it in and we are done with blacklisting and setting it all up um, so this is finished and we're able to proceed we go ahead and reboot after all these files are changed and then we're going to run this next command from uh, the lspci just to verify the kernel that is pulled in says vfio and not amd gpu so let's go ahead and do that so this command uh, that is also in the description You'll see the top controller is my Vega card and it is using the AMD GPU because I want all of it on my main box. Now the new secondary card, which is my 570, is below it. Now you do see kernel driver in use VFIO PCI and that's what matters. Don't pay attention to the kernel modules, it's mainly the driver that counts here and now that we see this, we know we have completed this step accurately. If you have not, you're probably gonna need to modify this step. If you have like an NVIDIA card, you're gonna probably need different configurations for these files. Uh, I don't have those offhand. However, I would encourage you to look them up until you can replicate this right here. This is our verification for step two, a must. Once you've achieved kernel driver in use, VFIO, you can go ahead and proceed to the next step. So our next step is gonna be app armor um, for Debian or Ubuntu. It comes preloaded with this and you need to make changes to the libvirt QEMU profile. This profile limits, it basically protects what, what app armor does. I made a whole video about it. I'll go ahead and link it up here. But just the short of it is app armor protects programs from running wild and says, hey, you have to play within this box. And if it tries to take control of another device, app armor shields you from that and says, no, not allowed. So we need to expand those privileges. And that's what we're doing in this step. So we're going to go ahead and do a nano into this and app armor dot D is important abstractions and then lib vert q e m u now this is a rather sizable file um, but what we need is usb access that's gives us the ability to pass through usb devices to our uh, virtual machine which is important and then also we need to add some stuff for looking glass on down the road because i hate switching monitor inputs just to see uh what i'm doing on my second you know graphics card or that virtual machine so uh easy thing is just do a control w to do a search in nano and then we just do usb access from here um this device by default i added the two asterisks and then made it read write and then i went ahead and added this down here uh, just open up the USB for this virtual machine. And then at the very end, I went ahead and added looking glass um, just to give it that ability to read write using the looking glass program. So with that done, app armor is set, go ahead and write out. And then we would just do uh, sudo system control restart app armor and then it would restart app armor and reload that profile for us. So from here, we are ready to set up our virtual machine and get going. This is just the intro. I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here, and this is gonna be part one of the configuration. I like to break this up in part one and part two, mainly because 
I want you to make sure you're following each one of these steps. I don't want you to go, oh, I think it's okay, and then move forward. You need to make sure you do each one of these steps. If you have issues, ask questions in the comment uh, section below. If nobody answers, definitely check out the Reddit subreddits out there for this are fantastic. You can always ask on the Chris Titus Tech subreddit. Link is in the description. But uh, that is going to do it for today for this part one. Part two will be creating the virtual machine, passing it through, and doing some fun configurations in Windows and basically getting it up to snuff to where we can start gaming on our secondary monitor. And then part three will be the looking glass. And with that said, guys, I'll see you on the next part.